Before we talk about translation, it's important to first discuss protein structure. There's four levels of protein structure. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So let's start by looking at primary structure. Primary structure is very important in that ultimately primary structure is going to determine the overall structure of that protein. Primary structure is the sequence of amino acids and it's going to be held together by peptide bonds. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. They're also the fundamental unit of primary structure. Amino acids are in what's called the L conformation and thus we call amino acids L amino acids. This L refers to the stereochemistry of amino acids. There's 20 standard L amino acids and these amino acids are the ones that we see in nature. However, you may also have D amino acids which you'll talk about more in a class like biochemistry. Although you may have already learned the properties of most of the side chains for amino acids in a class like Bio 1, for this course that's not going to matter as much. What's going to be more important is just knowing this basic structure of an amino acid. Amino acids are going to have a carboxyl group, an amine group, an R group, and a hydrogen around an alpha carbon. It's also important to mention that at physiologic conditions, this carboxylic acid is going to be deprotonated and is going to exist as a carboxylate ion. And this amine group is going to exist as a protonated amine. Secondary structure of proteins is mainly due to hydrogen bonding in the backbone of a polypeptide chain. Secondary structure is generally classified as alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. You'll learn more about this in biochemistry, but for right now, the important thing to know is that secondary structure is alpha helices and beta sheets. Tertiary structure describes the folded, or as you may hear in some papers, the native structure of a protein. It's mediated and refined by interactions such as ionic, disulfide, or dipole-dipole interactions such as hydrogen bonds, but the primary driving force behind tertiary structure is the hydrophobic effect, which causes protein folding by forcing hydrophobic groups together and excluding them from water, decreasing the entropy of the molecule and folding the molecule into one of these native shapes, which again is going to be refined by these other interactions. The final level of protein structure is quaternary structure. Quaternary structure is not existent in all proteins, but it is going to exist in proteins that are multi-subunit or that have many domains. In a quaternary protein, multiple different tertiary proteins come together to form one large multi-domain protein. The driving force behind this is many of the same driving forces as tertiary structure, such as ionic, disulfide, dipole-dipole, or hydrophobic interactions. The last thing we're going to talk about is denaturation. Denaturation is the unfolding of a protein due to conditions such as heat or salt or pH imbalance. Generally, when we think of denaturation, we think of a tertiary or a quaternary protein returning back to its secondary structure. Thus, it unfolds. Protein denaturation may also follow to take that protein back to its primary structure. However, denaturation is never going to go beyond that primary structure of polypeptides. And it was actually denaturation that showed researchers that this amino acid sequence is so important to determining the overall structure because denatured proteins were able to refold back into their native form. Protein denaturation is an important consideration for molecular biology and especially in molecular genetics. As you may have learned if you're taking genetics lab right now, denaturation is an important consideration that you overcome by using buffers and when you're using PCR you overcome this by using a high heat resistant enzyme such as TAC polymerase. Fully functioning proteins are incredibly important to cells and they carry out numerous roles and all this starts back with primary sequence which we get during translation. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.